everyone welcome back to rich tech today we've got a magsafe 260 watt power adapter on our close inspection we have that puncher right there on the cable and at the junction right here we've got another damage with that our charger cannot work but uh, we can bring this charger back to life in a few short minutes let's see how First thing you're going to do is to cut off this cable near the junction, cut it cleanly like that, and uh, this wasted piece too, we don't need it. Let us uh, confirm if this cable is working. To do that, I want to test for continuity and for any short circuitry. There are two wires inside this cable. I want to see if those ones are continuous up to the pins in front here those pins shining there and uh, if these two wires inside do not come into contact at any point before we find out if this cable is working we've got to slide this junction over the wire and uh, it's best you slide it in now so that you don't forget it because uh, you may say let me test the cable first and if it's working then I will go ahead and put this in but you'll find out that after testing the wire, the cable and it's working, you may forget to put this in. And now if you forget this, it will be a pain to get it in here. Why? Because you'll have to break your joint, destroy everything you've done, slide this in, then solder again. That's double work for nothing. So better be uh, safe than sorry. We slide it in here, even though we don't know if this cable is working. So we go ahead and do it just like this shouldn't be uh, difficult and uh, if you want to know how to pre prepare one of these uh, junctions there is a link to uh, another video I've done I'll uh, put it up here or down in the description you can look at that and see how you can come up with such a rubber junction now, the next thing you've got to do is to peel off this rubber insulation and uh, expose the wires cut round this rubber with a sharp razor then remove this insulation out of the way just like that spread out this wires inside the negative wire which is not insulated spread it out gather it together separately from the positive here we go peel a bit of the insulation from the positive wire and now this cable is ready for testing i will test for continuity we've already set a multimeter to that point to test for continuity if we touch those two ends of the multimeter together uh, we get that sound showing us that there's contact and continuity let's test our wire this is a negative wire it's continuity what about with this other one so that's a test which it has passed the test for short there is no short circuitry in this cable these two wires are not touching at any point next we'll test for continuity test if this wire and this wire they are running continuously all the way up to this point and uh, if you've seen my past videos you'll have known that this is a ground wire it is connected to these two outer pins the last pins and this is the V out the positive wire it is connected to the two inner pins so if you put this here let's see how we can hold this yes that's the negative is connected to that and we probe our pins here you can see the negative is also connected to this body so 
So it is connected to the first and the last pins, not connected to the middle three. The second wire is the positive wire. Let's see what it is connected to. It is connected to the middle two. The second pins from the ends. The third pin right here is a sensor pin which enables this connector to communicate to your MacBook and allow the charging to start or to proceed. Now we've ascertained that this cable is good, it has continuity, it has no shots. The next thing you want to test it is to find out if the circuitry here is working. Because you'll find most of the time or sometimes that there is continuity, there is no shorting, but the circuitry here is dead. And how do you test that? You connect this cable to a working charger and see if that light comes on. And uh, we can do another test while we are doing this. The other test we can do is to find out if this charger is working. And how do we do that? We connect a working cable right here and uh, connect this to a power source and connect it to a MacBook charger and see if it is working. So we can do two things at the same time. You can open this up because there are no wires sticking out there. If there are wires sticking out, we'll test it from there, but we'll still need to open it anyway. So we'll open it this up. I have videos showing how to open this up. Here is our charger open. And we opened only one edge we leave the other edge intact. This will uh, aid us in uh, reassembling this charger and it will also make our work easier. That's our charger. We only opened enough to get access to this junction right here. You can just cut this off. Next, we peel off the insulation from these wires. Connect this to a power source. If you hear that popping sound, it shows you that this charger has input. All you want to test now is if, if it has output. And to test for output, it's very easy. Using the same cable from the same charger, connect that to the MacBook. And uh, on this other end, we have our charger. You need to connect these two bare ends of the cable to the charger. The positive or the white wire will go with, with the white and the negative will go with the bare. Wow, there is a green and amber. So both this charger and this cable are working. On this side of the cable, we have this uh, bare wire, which is a negative. Slide some heat shrink tubing over it. That will act as insulation. When we apply our solder there and here, this heat shrink tubing will shrink, as the name suggests, and hold the wire tightly. Apply some solder to the ends of the wires. And uh, do this for the wire sticking out of the charger too. Ensure that the solder goes all around the wire. You can turn this over. The next thing is to join the two wires on both sides. Solder them together. The red heat shrink tubing has been used on the bare wire, the negative wire. But you don't need to get confused with that only thing you need to do is to solder the white first white to the white one before we solder the negative wire you've got to make sure to insulate that using insulating tape place it on top of the joint and uh, cover this should prevent the two wires from ever getting into contact. Once you've uh, insulated that, uh, you go ahead and solder this. Cover it with insulating tape.
apply some super glue to the cable where the joint will hold on to it before the super glue dries pull this junction all the way to the end now this junction is secured to the cable next we secure this joint back inside the casing rotate and place the junction where it's supposed to uh, fit and uh, push it gently into position with the joint in place now we go ahead and apply super glue to this end and uh, secure both these ends of the charger together and remove this clip the inner clip right here to give us space to apply glue on this edge too we want this edge to be as strong as possible apply enough glue to hold the joint together but not excess which will spill over the finished work should not show any uh, evidence of glue Replace the inner clip, uh, put in the outer clip, squeeze the jo joint shut and hold this in a vice clamp or uh, somewhere where it can uh, push these two sides of the MagSafe charger together long enough for the glue to set. While the glue is setting on the other side with a razor I've cut around this rubber insulation. just how we want it but we also want to remove this rubber a certain distance uh, under this outer rubber insulation we want to remove it from this end using a blunt razor lift this outer rubber covering up and cut the inner one if you do that you should be able to pull this out simply like that let me lift this up so that you can see we have a space for this rubber to go in apply some glue in here super glue then pull this and push it underneath this rubber insulation here's our glue make sure it goes all round then quickly pull this rubber sitting inside push it inside then uh, squeeze it so that the glue sets evenly and you use a piece of cloth so that you do not touch the glue with your bare fingers if you do that, it will stick to your fingers, you'll, cut, you'll have to cut them loose. If you do a good job, that's how your joint should look. The wires are totally covered and the joint is strong, stronger than before because you have now super glue inside there. Both of these are now perfect as good as new and uh, let's go ahead and test it is a macbook connect it and connect the charger to a power source and we have charging sorry for the glare but uh, there we are this charger is working perfectly it's been given a new lease of life and uh, that's how you do your repairs if you like this content kindly consider subscribing to my channel i really appreciate that also like and uh, share with other people so that they may know how to do this work from home thanks for your time